Hey, what's up guys? This is Dr. Thought. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Emerald Randomized Nuzlocke. And in the last episode, we took on the 7th gym leader, those twins Liz and Tate, and we basically destroyed them with minimal difficulty. But anyways, in today's episode, we're going to be making our way to, uh, oh gosh, it's not Lily Cove, it's not Mossy, Sutopolis. Sutopolis. But first, um, I thought I get like dive somewhere around here. Um, alright, I think I have to go talk to, uh, Steven in the Space Center first, I think. Oh, here we go, here we go, so I have to. Okay. I totally forgot about this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to Scott here. Doc, feeling good? I'm doing great. I heard Moss Deep's gym leader is pretty strong. Not really. I decided to come and take a look to see myself, but there's something wrong about this town. People are going on about a warning letter in the Space Center. I don't think it concerns me, but anyway, though. He just walks away on that. What? How about a little more explanation? Alright, uh, I guess we're gonna fight some grunts here. I really didn't remember this at all. So I guess that's what we're doing instead, guys. Sorry about that. The Moss Deep Space Center. Oh, and if you guys are lost where we're at and you're starting the series just now, I recommend that you look in the description down below and check out the playlist and start from the beginning. This episode, we're just gonna start taking out things like a madman. See, this is what I wish I could do to my manager too. Just use surf and send a tidal wave at them. It's weird how you can also challenge the ones on the side, but if you run right down the center, you don't even see them. You don't even have to fight them, honestly. I feel like Dugong is going to get a new move here soon, and I really want it to be uh, Ice Beam. But at the same time, I really want to train up um, Cast the Vile Plume, and because I'm pretty sure at level 44, uh, Cast gets Petal Dance, which I've been waiting for that since it was a Gloom, and I evolved it a little bit early because it was going to learn Petal Dance anyways at that, like at 44 as a Gloom too. So it really made no difference for me. Oh, that's right, I did learn something. Um, is takedown better than try attack? Yes, but it's less accurate, so I'm just gonna hold and try attack. I'm actually gonna take advantage of these grunts in these levels, even though they're a little bit low, just because, uh, Whenever I was facing the gym leader, I did realize that we we're just on par, barely, and that kind of scares me a little bit, for reasons like this. Like, what if there was a Groudon on par with me? Like, it, like one Ancient Power is going to do like half to me. Um, guess we'll Aurora Beam it, just see how much that does. Still a stab move. There we go. See, look at this. Look at this. Bulk up. Like, this thing would, would wreck me if it was on par. I don't have too much I can actually do to this thing. You know, outside of fat here. With that, you know, it's pretty easy. You know, I think for the sake of what I was saying... It would just be really nice to be able to get a grass type move here. So I'm just going to train up cast right now. And I'll come back to Fat and everyone else. Bellager's going to be back up for now. Man, I wish I had Solar Beam. Oh, uh, come on now, cast. I'll probably heal most of that with leftovers. And now that I think about it, I'm nine levels above this thing. Do I really need to put it to sleep? 
Like, if I throw acid at it, it's probably a 3 co, I'd guess. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Probably do about the same as Furious Wipes. Yep. Wait, do I have Chlorophyll? I totally forgot about that. I kind of wondered why I was going faster than the Sneasel. Yeah, I do. That's what I thought. I guess Groudon is helpful. If I get a Groudon, I guess uh, Groudon and Cass wouldn't be a bad pair. Same with uh, Surya. Powered up Blaze Kick's never a bad thing. Sorry, Fat. I just need Cass to get that Grass type move because there have been a few times here that we could really use it. Okay. So, no one on this side we need to fight, so let's just go right over here. You know, um, there's this series on YouTube called uh, Pokemon Rusty, and in that, um, the main character, Rusty, tries to uh, sneak into Team Rocket, and they just simply overpower him without an issue, and make fun of the fact that you can sequentially beat an evil team, and they just give him money, and, you know let them through all the way to their boss and I really thought about it whenever they said it because it's really true why would an evil team even after beating uh, your beating their Pokemon give you money first of all and then second of all let you through like I get that that's how the world works but at the same time they're thieves like why would they you know go under the normal laws of a Pokemon battle. It makes more sense in, like, the anime whenever they throw out, like, two or three Pokemon to fight one and, you know, completely ignore the official Pokemon League rules. You guys know what I'm saying. I don't understand why these things are so underleveled. Like, I feel like five levels higher would make more sense. Oh no, that's probably what, uh, max these are gonna be if I fight him now. But I do not remember if I do. See, look at that, he's like steps aside, like, oh, this seemed fun. Whenever I say no, then can I go back and heal? I'm always thinking about other games. Like right now I'm thinking about um, Oraz, uh, Omega Ruby Off Sapphire, for those who aren't familiar with the slang term. Um, and how they really took advantage, or they took more advantage of the Space Center and just gave it a little bit more to it in the post game. Whenever they allowed you to fly on Mega Rayquaza and um, get and fight Deoxys, the triangle. And speaking of that, that kind of makes me wonder. So, in this world, there are clearly other Pokemon that exist. Whether they're Deoxys or Clefairy. Which, by that logic, that would mean that, first of all, there are other worlds with Pokemon. Which, rather than using their multiverse theory that they did use, which makes sense in some cases, but for games like um, XE Gale of Darkness and Pokemon Coliseum, they could have that be on a different planet. Or all of these like ROM hack games that people make with brand new Pokemon. Easy. Another planet. Like, the Pokemon Company could support these, make some decent money off of them, and just say they're on a different planet and have nothing to do with their main timeline. They didn't have to include them at all if they don't want to. But you know, that that's too, that's too easy. They'd rather just sue people. 
Oh, hey, look at that, Deoxys. I wonder if he has Psychic yet. Let's not find out. Oh, he's got Knock Off. Oh, you knocked off my leftovers. Not my lefties. This music really kills me. I love it so much. That did more than I thought it would. Oh, it does have Psychic. Oh boy. Can I high roll this real quick? Nope. Um. It shouldn't kill, but just in case he just got like a low roll, we'll just make it safe. Which is kind of sad because I basically had taken it out. Oh, that was a crit. And he lowered my special defense. Oh my goodness. Let's just not. Jeez. Calm down. At least he didn't get to confusion too. Wait, does I get confused? No, no, I think it only has the one secondary effect of uh, the special defense drop. Jeez. That battle was a lot harder than it needed to be. Now, I keep forgetting it doesn't just stay on the healing page. And Steven. Uh, Team Magma, what's the point of stealing rocket fuel? Since you're so curious, you deserve an explanation. We're going to jettison the entire load into Mount Chimney with Groudon gone. We have no need for that slag heap of a mountain anymore. So, we'll use the fuel power to make the volcano erupt. It'll be savage. Jeez, did he push him or shove him? Like, gosh. Doc, you're going to help me. Let's go into battle together. Are you ready? Sure, why not? Uh, let's see. Like you, you, and you. Okay. I didn't realize he, it showed the Pokemon that he used for some reason. Oh, he still has Metang? I doubt it randomized that well. Like, I feel like that's giving it a little too much credit. Psychic on the Nidoran. Good job. That should one shot it. Kind of interesting that Steven's team doesn't get randomized here, but I really shouldn't be complaining too much because his team is good. Wait, doesn't Metang evolve? No, Metang evolves at 44, that's right. I was thinking 42. Does that put me to sleep or? Yeah. Do I have a flute for that? Got a red one. Just have the red one. Okay. Um, so the five chesto berries. That seems very effective. To keep hitting a Metang with Psybeam, I don't understand that. Alright, that's cool. 
set up both of them. I like it. Why don't you, uh, psychic over here in this general direction of this parasect? That'd be great, too. Okay, can we, can we stop putting him to sleep? Please? It's very annoying. Well, I guess while we're sitting in this battle, now would be a decent time to do a question of the day. That still did a lot of damage. Um, Alright, so, question of the day here. What is the biggest thing that you have ever won? Now, I consider this both for, like, your trophy, uh, the kind of event it was, and personally, like, how it was, how it, like, felt for you guys. I think all of them applied here right now. Um, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to choose uh, the biggest, like, item that I've ever won. In my case, it was a trophy. And that was from a Cub Scout event, which, for those of you who didn't know, I was a Cub Scout. And... Um, it was a Pinewood Derby, which is where you take like a little wooden car that you uh, basically detail yourself and you put wheels on it and you put little numbers on it and you paint it and weigh it down with little like lead weights and everything. It's a whole fun little thing you do with your parents or guardian or uncle. It was great fun for many years when I did it. But anyways, um, I actually ended up winning that year somehow. I honestly don't remember how that well. But, uh, that year, that, that was the biggest trophy that my pack of Cub Scouts had ever really had. And it was, it's pretty big. I'd say it's probably, like, two feet tall. And I, I still have it, like, in my room. It's, like, one of my, like, prized possessions because it's my biggest thing that I have one. And I still like to look at it, like, to this day and, like, I actually won this. Like, I did a good work on this thing. This meta tank can, like, just beat up. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys, what your guys' answer would be for this. Like, what's the biggest thing that you've won for competition-wise or whatever? You know, all those things that I said earlier. This battle, I need to really switch out. Yeah, this is not going well. I cannot keep doing this. And I'm really sorry about that beeping. I, I can't get rid of it. I don't I can't heal the metang. I like my tank's just trying to set up light screen again. Nope. That is a very annoying sound. Okay, um... Let me see how much surf does. Decent, but I feel like if I focus my attack, it's gonna do more. Maybe if Metang actually. What? Who are you hitting? Okay, that's good. I don't know if I've ever seen Steven throw out more than just his Metang in this fight. I'm going to now for the first time. It's got an aggro on. It's odd how he holds back his Skarmory of all things. Like, what's Skarmory gonna do? I don't see anything special about a Skarmory. I think uh, Umbreon's a especially bulky Pokemon, so I was hoping to hit it with a nice physical attack. That might help. Uh, way to go, Aggron. You protected yourself from that scary face. Huh? 
she didn't protect herself. They like almost doubled into you. Okay. We're almost done with this battle. It's been like 20 minutes of this recording and most of it's been here. Oh, you have Dragon Claw? What? Why do you have Dragon Claw? You have a Raikou. What is this here? Can you get burned, Raikou? Or frozen? That'd be great. No? Okay. Alrighty then. We're just gonna get right up on out here. I feel like Cass has a good chance of taking these hits. I'll get aggro. Not a bad idea. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's what I mean though, like Maxi right here is higher than any of my mon right now and it's kind of scary radicate is a surprisingly scary pokemon just because it gets the super fang and hyper fang super early but even in later levels like this it's still scary you what what is this move set Why do you have Solar Beam and Dragon Claw? Honestly, what is this? Like, I shouldn't be complaining all that much. Like, you have a great versatile moveset. Let me uh, help you out there a little bit, buddy. Jeez Louise, though. That move set's ridiculous. I'd really like to know what else you have. Oof. Oh, if you would have hyper fanged the aggro, it would have went down. You have thunder. What? Why? Why do you have thunder? Do you even have a rock or steel type move? Oh my goodness. Actually ridiculous. Quick hit him with the thunder, Agron. Oh, I called it. Jeez. That's so ridiculous. Why does your Agron have these moves, Steven? What are you doing? That was a long battle, guys. I am sorry. My goodness, though. So. We failed to make the volcano erupt. We failed to control Groudon after it awoke. Is our mission to expand the land misguided? If if we deem Magma are wrong, then might Team Aqua School to expand the sea be equally misguided? Alright, we'll give up on the fuel. There appear to be more important matters that I must examine. Oh, that was tense. Thank you, Doc. I have something to give you as thanks for your support. Come see my home after this. Ah, yes. I don't live in Rustboro. I live right here on this island. Thanks, Steven. Okay, now we can do what I thought we were going to do at the very beginning of this episode. Wheelie around. That's exactly what we're going to do all episode. Doc, as you can see, there's not much here, but this is my home. Thank you after all you've done. This is my token of appreciating the hidden machine and die. No need to be shy. You've earned this. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to kind of run through this a little bit, guys, because I do kind of want to do other things in this episode. Why is sir? You might notice there are dark patches of water. If you use dive, you'll drop to the sea floor. When you want to come back up, just press dive. If you have some place, in some places, it won't be possible for you to surface, though. Great. Now, let me go ahead and go and heal. And what am I going to do about dive? Because I know that only one Pokemon team can learn it right now. I really don't want to give him dive, so... Let's see who in the good old PC can learn dive. You know, like an Omanite could. Or a Sharpedo. I want to keep flying on my team for right now, so I'm gonna try to leave. Uh, oh man, what is your name even? I know it's, it's like Baron Bjorn. Really? Oh, seven torpedo already has four moves. Sort of. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now, guys. Since we only have a little while, um, I am gonna go ahead and elect to make this time some encounter time. So in the case of this, um, say using dive, um, I decided that the entire seafloor um, I will only get one encounter for the underwater section. So for the entire underwater world, I only get one encounter. I feel like that's the most fair way to do this. I just have to find some grass because I don't remember where it is. I think there's some over by um, Sutopolis, so let me make my way there. I don't think I have Route 120 yet. Nope, I don't have that encounter yet. So, I think Zootopolis over to the left though. Okay, so Route 128 is a Duskull. Should be a pretty easy catch. Now, um, as some of you may know who have played through this game for, this game is um, starting to come to an end. So I'm going to go ahead and start asking you guys, what project do you think I should do next? Like, what game would you like to see me play? Um, I would try to stick to uh, strictly Pokemon games. For any of you want to be kind of creative and say something else, I would like to stick to Pokemon games. I'm going to give a quick name, nickname here. Uh, female Duskull is going to be named Flan. Very fitting name. Okay, so I think over here to the left-ish is Route 126, which is the way I need to head. Oh, that was uh, kind of important. Uh, for any you didn't see, uh, I talked about a giant green Pokemon that was flying over uh, Pacific Log Town. Okay, that's Meganium. That might take a little bit of time. Sleep. It's not gonna take a psychic or anything. Um, 
maybe Bjorn might be able to do something to it. I guess Dad's gonna just get in a ball. You know, I don't have a ton of um, starters. Very hyper voice. Yeah, I uh, actually this and Blaze can are my only starters. I'm a little bit surprised. For all the encounters that I have, I don't have a ton of uh, starters. How dare you growl me? One second. Let's get back to sleep. Hope oh, nope. That's kind of annoying. Let's just try to not worry about that. If Bjorn can hit a hypnosis, though, please. Now this beginning will just stay asleep. I won't really have to worry about it. Oh, come on now. That's just not necessary. Meganium is just really annoying right now. It's not. It's like it's hard to catch. It's just. If I wasn't poisoned, it wouldn't be quite as annoying. There we go. Okay. Got the Meganium. Oh, I got the perfect name for this guy. Oops, spelled it wrong. Altair. Okay, I think right here is where Sutopolis should be. All right, this one I meant right here. Like, oh, one sec. Uh, do I have any more heal powder? Nope, but I got some lava cookies. Dang it, come on. There we go. Okay, so here underwater, there's like patches of grass, and for all of them, I'm just gonna have one encounter overall. And I feel like I have a Teddy Ursa. No, I do not. Earth ring. Alright, so I'm going to get this one, and then I think I'm basically going to have to get the Sutopolis city encounter. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get that, and I think that is where we can call the episode. Seems like a decent place before anything else really happens. Oh, come on now, Ursaring. We don't need to play the hard game. If I can catch Meganium, I can catch you. Eh. 
There we go. You know, I always think about this towards the end of Nuzlocke's. If you have a solid team, there's not a ton of reason in catching a lot of things. And it's really hard sometimes to decide if you really want to catch it. Like, at this point, um, I have one gym battle left and the league. So the chances of me losing something are fairly high, but I also have a lot of things in the box that I could use. But there's always potential of getting something better. Okay, so I did not manage to get this topless city encounter. So, I'm going to go ahead and call it here, guys. So, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like. Subscribe, if you will. And I'll see you guys next time. But, always remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So please, have some blueberries.